52, right. Good morning and welcome. I think it's uh, the last, uh, this is the last presentation for the morning, right? And then we will have a, do a lunch or anything else. But uh, so I'm just behind you and, uh, and your, uh, your lunch. Um, the presentation today is, uh, well, you can see the title. Uh, we're talking about database as a service, but not just database as a single instance, but database cluster as a service in OpenStack. Let's be uh, the objective, and I hope uh, you will find information that might be interesting for you. First of all, my name, Ivan, or Ivan in English, Zarafi. Um, I'm the CTO at SkySQL. Uh, SkySQL uh, is uh, a company behind, um, well, I think the most uh, interesting brand is MariaDB. Who knows MariaDB, by the way? Okay, not many, but quite a few. Um, so we are, we are basically uh, an alternative for uh, services and products to the standard uh, Oracle MySQL. And uh, we are funded by the, um, well, by the core developers of the original MySQL, meaning Montevideo and David Axman. Um, but let's talk about the objective today. First of all, uh, uh, I will give you a brief introduction of where we stand now, where we stand today with MySQL, MariaDB, and Pacona, which are, of course, the three most uh, interesting, um, interesting um, distributions for MySQL. And uh, then we will talk about uh, this integration into, um, into OpenStack and other, uh, other um, cloud services. So we will touch a little bit uh, AWS and others. So but let's start, first of all, with, uh, um, with MySQL in the cloud. So some of you are familiar with, uh, with MariaDB. Let's see who knows Percona Server, who has used Percona Server or is using Percona Server. Not many. What about MySQL? Let's see. <laughs> okay, a few more. Right, so we are pretty much 80 or 90 percent uh, if, we, if we sum up the three, the three ones. So as I, as I said, you can see these three columns here. They refer to the three different distributions of MySQL nowadays. And uh, I mean, uh, I forgive, uh, I, I really ask forgiveness for some of you who may know very, very well MariaDB or Procona, because of course these are not very detailed uh, bullets, uh, but uh, you will see that, I mean, pretty much they, they should, uh, they, they basically match the reality as is, as a, as a let's say, main uh, elements. So MySQL, of course, is now, uh, is now uh, from Oracle, uh, acquired with uh, Sun Microsystem in 2010. And uh, the trademark, the code, the documentation, and all the bugs are available in the various um, MySQL websites that are based on the MySQL domain still owned by Oracle. Uh, the current GA release is 5.6. Uh, the majority um, of the, let's say, of the installations right now, I believe they are pretty much on 5.5. There are still few on, uh, on uh, 5.1 and earlier releases. Um, 5.6 is catching up, I would say. It's a, it's a very good release, and of course, there, is a, there, is, there are very good reasons to, to upgrade. 5.7 is uh, currently under development. Um, there are uh, development milestone release available. Uh, they are definitely not feature completed and, uh, and they're still, uh, uh, they still under heavy development. So it's good to start testing them, but not, probably not really a good idea to put them into production at all. Um, MariaDB is uh, a project uh, started by uh, Monty Vidinos. As I said, Monty is uh, one of the original founders of MySQL and the original creators of MySQL. Uh, and it's, uh, it's based uh, uh, from a branch of uh, Oracle MySQL 5.5. That's the current GA version um, with uh, some add-ons uh, from Percona and other key contributors. Um, we have uh, now in development, and actually as of today, uh, this slide is already outdated because we have 10.05 out uh, starting tonight. Um, so we have the first beta release, uh, which is a real fork from Oracle MySQL. It's no longer a branch. Uh, and we have uh, add-ons and new storage engines that I'm going to uh, explain a, a little bit more details in another slide. And then on, the other, on this side, we have Procona server. And uh, in, in this case, the latest release is a 5.6 GA. 
and uh, it's a branch from Oracle, and again, from, uh, with add-ons uh, that are from uh, MariaDB and from other uh, key contributors. So all in all, you can see that uh, there, are, uh, there is a, a, a quite a strong interaction uh, and collaboration between the three. Now, there are lots of features. I mean, I, I, many people are, are pretty uh, confused by which version and which uh, um, distribution to use. Um, and uh, and uh, I mean, I, I definitely don't blame them because uh, there are really lots of features that are similar, um, or at least uh, uh, they're claimed to be similar, but then you look into the details and, uh, and uh, there are quite significant differences. Um, but anyway, just to be, just to be uh, a little bit uh, uh, more detailed here, on uh, MySQL 5.6 uh, in Oracle, we, have, uh, we can see like, uh, great improvements in terms of scalability, and that's really great, great news. Um, new features with uh, plugins and, uh, and uh, new, um, new tools uh, for, uh, uh, for analysis and performance review, et cetera. Um, Definitely great features within ODB, which is a transactional engine for MySQL. And, um, and um, another interesting feature is in uh, MySQL replication with the global transaction ID that was a long-awaited uh, uh, feature for, uh, for MySQL, but probably not quite right with 5.6. And we are looking at 5.7 for, uh, for a real um, good implementation of a global transaction ID plus many utilities, uh, more online DDL operations, which is another big problem, I would say, for MySQL since the early days, uh, compared to other databases like Postgres and others. Um, and uh, sub-query optimization and, uh, and uh, other, other optimizations. And then you see, uh, I know it's a little bit small, the font is small, but in red uh, there are some paying features. So these are not open source. These are basically offered as a as a feature if you buy a subscription in, uh, on the left column if, uh, from Oracle with the thread pool, the PAM authentication, and the OD plugin. Uh, MariaDB, on the other hand, uh, is still based on 5.5, and uh, that's the GA version, so it's a little bit behind from this point of view. But uh, there, is a lot of, there has been a lot of work on the subquery optimization, so if you have quite complex queries in your SQL, you can really benefit from that. And, um, and uh, well, you should, let, let's put it this way, the, 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 the optimizer team at, uh, the original optimizer team at uh, uh, MySQL, the original MySQL company is now working in the MariaDB team. So of course, uh, there is a quite a lot of effort there and, and a very good results from this point of view. So that's why you can see in the clinician push, push down, the batch key access, et cetera, that uh, have been significantly improved in MariaDB. Um, the other interesting point for this release is the use of, uh, uh, well, of course, the extension of collaborations with other, other companies. So there are more storage engines. And the storage engines, of course, give you like a, a perfect tool or a best tool for uh, what you need to do, like, uh, for example, for uh, uh, full text index indexing or uh, if you need like uh, um, a kind of sharding scalability or, um, um, or a more specific, uh, more specific uh, request like uh, column arrangements and so on. Um, another point that uh, I think is quite important is the group commit, uh, which is another interesting feature that was long missing and, uh, and uh, we have in 5.5, uh, in it's been in 5.5 for MariaDB for about, I would say, 18 months now. On the right hand side here, you have Percona as 5.6 GA where you can see that uh, uh, 5.6, of course, is a port from, uh, from Oracle MySQL 5.6, uh, plus uh, a definitely great ad addition, uh, which is the a, a evolution of uh, the InnoDB storage engine called ExtraDB. So basically, with ExtraDB 5.6, you have all the great features and, and uh, improvements that you can see in, uh, in the InnoDB side on Oracle, plus uh, extra bits that have been uh, added by, by the Procona team. Okay, moving on, of course, here on this slide we have, uh, we have what's coming. So what is not GA yet, but what you should expect um, for the next releases. And you can see that, of course, with MySQL we have 5.7, and with MariaDB we have 10, MariaDB 10. So 
there is a significant difference. Like uh, with MySQL, there is a continuation from 5.6 to 5.7, uh, where I would say Oracle has uh, very well fixed, or they are fixing some of the issues that were available on 5.6. Um, and of course, there are also new great improvements. MariaDB 10, as I said, is a fork. So in this case, we, uh, we have, a, we have a, basically, we deviate from the original, uh, from the original trunk here, and, uh, and we have uh, something more uh, ambitious. And again, based on, uh, on the collaboration with, uh, with, other, um, with other companies and uh, other developers outside the core MariaDB team. So um, there, are, uh, there are new storage engines like uh, the Cassandra engine, which integrates MySQL with Cassandra, the Connect engine, which is an engine that can uh, basically uh, connect uh, uh, all sorts of different files and other databases within MySQL. So you can think about that like uh, a, a, trying, uh, a, a connectivity to uh, standard file system and files uh, or uh, uh, to other databases through ODBC connections uh, or uh, JDBC connections, etc. So that's, uh, that's basically the idea of the Connect Engine uh, for interoperability between databases. Uh, so all in all, as you can see, uh, of course there are, there are lots of other choices out there in terms of databases, but with MySQL, uh, there are still um, improvements, significant improvements, uh, um, and, uh, and definitely the database is alive and it's really going on incredibly well also in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, new features, uh, new perfor uh, perform improved performance, scalability, et cetera. Uh, we don't have, uh, I don't have anything on the right side from Percona and the reason is that uh, Percona has just released 5.6 and, uh, and uh, that, is, that has been a, a significant effort from the Percona team and uh, we are waiting of course uh, for, uh, for the next beat. Uh, and, uh, and the next move, and what uh, we can add here in terms of that. Perfect. Right, and, uh, and uh, the question is what's behind, beyond, uh, uh, you know, beyond uh, five, six. That's, I think we'll see, right? Thank you so much. Great. Thank you for the Perfect. Okay, when we, when we talk about, uh, about MySQL, uh, it's always been a matter of uh, high availability, for performance, and ease of use. And we still, we're, I mean, that's not just MySQL, to be honest. I mean, it's also for any other database if you want. But we are still working on, uh, on, uh, on these specific uh, three um, aspects. Uh, and in terms of high availability, availability, let's see what we have here, what, what we have available with this, uh, uh, with a different, uh, um, options that you have. On MySQL, uh, the standard, uh, the standard uh, availability is based on MySQL replication. Are you familiar with MySQL replication? Who's familiar with that? Okay, right. Um, DRBD is another good choice. So you have a typical active passive environment based on, uh, on, uh, on the file system and the storage underneath. And then uh, um, uh, there's a, a a specific share storage uh, availability um, um, based, on, uh, based on Oracle Enterprise Linux. So I would say that's a little bit of a niche considering the, uh, the adoption of Oracle Enterprise Linux. On the MariaDB side, um, we still have a MySQL replication, but here we have added uh, something more. We have added what we call MHA, Master High Availability Tool, which is a, a, a tool that uh, controls the interaction between uh, uh, between the, uh, uh, the master and the slaves. Uh, and in case of fault of the master, it basically helps the database administrators or it works automatically to move the, um, let's say, the master from, one, uh, from, the, from the master to one of the designated slaves. And the result is that uh, we have, let's say, less errors or uh, less possible issues because you, you, as a database administrator, you may may do something wrong or may, may miss something that, uh, that uh, should be done as an operation. And we also added, of course, Pacemaker with uh, uh, the idea of uh, having um, a resource agent that can control the whole operations integrated with MHA. Uh, but one of the probably most interesting aspects, and that's very much into, into what we are going to discuss now with, uh, with OpenStack, is the idea of MariaDB Galera cluster. 
So in that case, uh, we have synchronous replication, so no longer asynchronous, semi-synchronous replication. And um, um, this technology has been developed by a, a, a small company in Finland called Codeship. Um, and now uh, MariaDB, as Percona does with uh, uh, a similar product called Percona ExtraDB cluster, um, is uh, basically available uh, with this synchronous replication. And then there is also support from the different companies for GRBD and the shared storage. Um, similar to the MySQL replication on the Percona side, we have MySQL replication with uh, what is called the Percona Replication Manager. So as you can see, there are uh, similar offering. The key point here is the fact that there is also synchronous replication on, uh, on, uh, on uh, these two specific distributions. Um, for performance uh, and scalability, uh, there is more improved scalability related to InnoDB, as I already said, uh, and a uh, few other bits and pieces like the group commit, etc. I, I will not go into the details of these aspects because uh, I think uh, we, we don't have much time to cover all the other aspects. But uh, you will have a slide, and uh, if you have any specific question, of course, uh, you can stop me after the, after the presentation or you can always drop an email. And so for ease of use, uh, again, there are utilities and tools around. Um, some of them are uh, from the original MySQL. Others have been added, uh, and uh, you can see the red ones are commercial. Uh, we have, of course, uh, extra backup, which is one of the most important aspects, especially when you use uh, InnoDB and, uh, and, uh, um, and transactional environments. Uh, and they are available. Extra backup is available for MariaDB and Percona. And uh, the Kona Toolkit is one, of course, of the most interesting tools that you can see. And uh, now we have something new that I'm going to discuss a little bit, which is called MariaDB Manager, and you will see it in a few minutes. Okay. Now, what do we have uh, as a, in terms of uh, availability of MySQL in the cloud today? Let's say what we have. What's the availability in, uh, uh, in terms of database as a service? So Rackspace provides uh, a... a relatively old versions of MySQL. If you go to log into Rackspace and you want to uh, use a MySQL server, well, what you have is a MySQL community 5.1. Um, otherwise, the other option is to use a standard server and you just bring your own database, uh, the, your favorite one. It might be, so it might be Percona, MariaDB, or MySQL, and there you go. So that's, uh, that's one option. Uh, you have, of course, limitations related to the instances and the, the size of instances you can have here. Uh, but that's, uh, that's pretty, much, pretty much it. Um, on the other hand, on HP Cloud, you have uh, something uh, similar. But in this case, the database is uh, a little bit more up to date. So you can have 5.5 and 5.6. Um, you, uh, you can have, uh, you have typically per core in this case. And, um, you can manage a single database instance uh, with uh, using uh, typically a RESTful API. So that means that you can, of course, uh, integrate uh, and orchestrate uh, the provisioning and the availability of the, of the database directly with other tools. Um, the servers are, uh, are of course, uh, standard servers uh, that, uh, that where you can bring, of course, your own database. And in that case, of, of course, you have more choices in terms of size and uh, uh, RAM, etc. Um, if you compare, if you compare what uh, we have available in uh, typical OpenStack-based uh, uh, clouds with uh, what AWS does, well, RDS is pretty much advanced from this point of view. They provide different versions: five one, five six, five one to five six. They they have uh, uh, the ability to provide provision I/O and flash storage with my, uh, with uh, MySQL. And uh, they already provide automatic backups, uh, storage replication, and MySQL replication combined all together. If you want to start a server, you can do that. And then uh, next, uh, you may say, OK, I want to connect another server with MySQL replication. And there you go. And then you can continue to add more. Um, there is a limited tuning, though which is a good and a bad thing at the same time, because if, uh, if you are not familiar with the MySQL or you are not, I mean, databases is really not your primary job. Maybe it's a good thing to not really mess up with the, with the uh, in-depth tuning. On the other hand, if you are pretty good with that, you may want to control it better. And of course, uh, you can't do it without, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with RDS. 
So the other option, of course, is to have your standard server um, um, that you, I mean, you can, you can just uh, fire up another instance uh, in EC2, select something from the marketplace if you want, or again, bring your own database version. And, uh, and you have a, a similar kind of uh, size for the instances uh, that, uh, that you may want to use. Now, let's see what we can have, uh, um, we can have uh, here with OpenStack, of course, refer to MySQL. First of all, we have to see two aspects. Uh, one is uh, the fact that uh, uh, MySQL can be used as a repository for OpenStack. So that is integrated into OpenStack. I'm not referring to the use of, uh, of the database uh, for uh, um, the clients, for the users. Right? I'm referring to the use of the database within OpenStack um, as a software. And that's the alternative to SQLite. Um, the reasons are pretty obvious. Uh, you have increased portability, uh, you have availab uh, high availability using MySQL, but you have also some other issues because, of course, uh, once, you in once you include something that uh, is uh, not just a set of files but uh, a set of processes that run, of course, you have to take care of that and you increase the complexity of your, uh, of your infrastructure. So um, that is very much used for uh, um, larger infrastructures that, uh, that you, you may want to use. And uh, as I said, the availability is the key factor. So the, the three options that uh, we used to see with OpenStack are just the use of standard MySQL replication, which is still a very, very good option. I mean, um, yes, there are some flaws that, yes, there may be problems, but uh, all in all is probably the most robust uh, um, um, technology that you can use compared to uh, compared to uh, Galera or DRBD. But still, DRBD and Galera are, are the two options that are definitely interesting. So when, you talk, when we talk about MySQL replication, uh, the, uh, um, the definition would be you use a, a MySQL server. You may co-locate it uh, with, uh, with um, um, one of the nodes, like with the control node, or uh, you may have it completely separate. And you create a cluster of uh, one master and at least two slaves. Okay, the minimum might be one master and one slave, but uh, by having one master and one slave, then you can, uh, you will uh, have uh, like um, um, possible issues in the way you want to use uh, a third node uh, for administration reasons. So the, the, probably the best solution is always to have this uh, environment with the, with the free machines. Uh, we're not talking about uh, resource-hungry machines here because the database is, uh, yes, of course, very important, uh, but uh, not uh, heavily used compared to other, um, other use of, the data of uh, MySQL in the, in the, um, in the usual uh, um, envi environments. Um, definitely, the, the best thing to do is to attach MHA to that, um, the master high availability tool. Again, why? Because it's, a, it's a, just a set of scripts fairly... Uh, fairly lightweight that uh, uh, run together with, uh, with MySQL replications and in case of fault they can basically simplify and, uh, um, and uh, um, let's say um, optimize what is uh, the, the, the failover from one server to another. Another important point is that you can also Im implement uh, directly with a MySQL replication also a disaster recovery um, um, environment. So by using the very same technology, you can also uh, replicate to other data centers. And in this case, of course, uh, uh, you may have a complete uh, um, recoverable system also in case of, uh, of a full disaster in a data center. Um, what is uh, still not great is the fact that when you have a, a failover inside the data center, you have serious problems with this disaster recovery because you're basically you need to move not just the master there, but you also need to reconnect uh, the systems here. And with, uh, and with uh, MySQL 5.5, without the global transaction ID, that is a serious problem. So that's, uh, uh, in case of fault internally to a data center, you may have some issues here. That's why with 5.6, uh, this uh, uh, is uh, definitely a better solution. And, um, and uh, I would recommend to consider these automatically only if you are going through 5.6 and not previous, with previous versions. Um, with DRBD, you have something very basic, very simple, but still working very well. 
meaning that you have a typical active passive environment. Um, in this case, you don't have shared storage, but you, may, you have a, um, um, a synchronous replication of the block devices between the two, between two servers. And the result is that when you have a fault on one of the servers, of course, you can, uh, or can, you can switch over to the, uh, or have an automatic failover to the other, to the other server. Still, you can create uh, uh, a replication between one uh, data center to another for disaster recovery, and that is uh, something that can, uh, can be done in a more clean way compared to the standard MySQL replication that I showed you before. And here it works definitely flawlessly because uh, you don't have any possibility of messing up with different servers that run at the same time, since with the, with the RBD you have only one server running at uh, at uh, one time. Um, Galera cluster, on the other hand, is probably one of the most interesting ones because uh, the first point is that uh, this is really uh, all active. So you don't have any more difference between uh, the masters, the slaves, or the actives and the passives. The systems are all run, uh, running at the same time. Yes, there, is, uh, uh, there are some issues, uh, uh, strictly speaking, and uh, it's uh, definitely uh, recommended to go and work with one server only, usually, with the uh, read and write operations. But you have all the other servers, uh, like for example, in a typical configuration with three nodes, you have all the other servers running at the same time. If you hit one of them and you write data, you synchronously have this data available on all the other nodes. Uh, and, uh, and that, of course, uh, means that uh, you have uh, less issues and less problems uh, if you have like any glitch in, uh, in your communication and you see one of these servers down when in reality maybe it's a network problem or something else. So um, let's say that uh, by using Galera, you have uh, a more stable and more re reliable environment in terms of high availability. And even in case of uh, um, situations and conditions that are not optimal, for high availability, you can still have a, a very consistent database, a consistent database, which is something that other technologies suffer quite a lot. And again, you can attach um, replication to, uh, to Galera in order to move from one data center to another. Um, it's not recommended to use Galera itself as a replication environment. I mean, there are some... Uh, um, some examples, but uh, uh, it's something that needs to be carefully reviewed because of the latency that may happen, because of the fact that uh, we are talking about synchronous replication here. And of course, uh, uh, I mean, physics uh, are always, uh, the law of physics is always um, something that rules, and you, you must consider that when you, when you also introduce uh, uh, remote data centers. So, um, these are the three options, uh, there may be others, but uh, I would say um, if you are considering to install and, uh, and run uh, um, open, an OpenStack environment which is pretty large, definitely one of these options may work for you. And uh, so far I would say the most recommended one would be Guerrera uh, because of the availability as I said and, uh, and, um, um, and, the, uh, and, and the fact that there is, there, are less, there is less risk generally speaking. Um, in running this in a high availability environment. There may be situations where other solutions are better, but uh, based on the experience uh, that I have and that we have in the organization I, I work for, definitely this is one of the best, uh, of the best options. Now let's talk about, uh, about MySQL, but as a service. So in this case, we refer to the fact that MySQL is available uh, to our users uh, when they run uh, applications uh, within OpenStack. So, starting from the provisioning, one of the key aspects is, of course, that uh, we must have something that is uh, an API available for the provisioning, and that's something, and uh, for interoperation, and that's something that uh, um, uh, with, the, with the new projects that you may have seen also here at the summit uh, this, um, um, this fall, uh, uh, we already have with, uh, with, um, within OpenStack with the project Trove. Now, that's one very good aspect. I think there are other things that must be absolutely considered, and I'm going to discuss them in a minute. Um, of course, uh, uh, for, uh, 
for uh, end users, uh, a GUI assisted version may be also very good because in that case we can provision as, a, as a we have seen with the HP Cloud or Rackspace or AWS, they can basically have a, a self-service uh, operation here. Um, now, the key element, though, is the last bullet that you can see in the slide, from the server to the cluster. So today, if you look at uh, the deployment of MySQL, how many MySQL servers that run in serious application? I mean, applications that must be, must be stay on 24-7 uh, because of a service they provide are just a single machine. Not many, I think. They, are always, uh, they always require high availability. They always require um, some sort of scalability that, uh, that is needed uh, in order to handle the peaks that may happen during, I don't know, during peak hours, for example, for your application. And uh, yes, of course, you can, uh, you can provision two servers, but then you have to do these operations manually. Yes, there are um, some, uh, there are some recipes and, uh, and tools that can help you in setting everything up in a, in a best possible way. But then technology evolves. And then you have new versions or new products. Uh, you basically break these uh, recipes and you have, uh, you have to have new ones. So there is a lot of manual operation around that. And that is uh, one of the key elements. Another important point is what I call the false promise of elasticity. So everything is elastic in the cloud. We all know that. That's why we are here. But guess what? The less elastic element uh, is the database. Well, maybe there are others, but uh, at least from our point of view, that is a big issue. Okay? Um, we, talk about, uh, we talk about something that is great in the cloud because uh, if we have like uh, um, um, a need for, uh, for more uh, power, then we can just uh, fire new instances. And then uh, when we don't need them, we just uh, shut them down, we destroy them. You can't do that with the database, right? Or you can, but how hard it is. It's, uh, it's, really, it's really difficult. So um, the typical uh, use with MySQL is uh, uh, basically, OK, you can have a, a standard MySQL replication for read scalability, which is good. Uh, and um, and uh, OK, it's limited because it's only read, but uh, uh, it covers many of the, the requirements that are in typical web applications or mobile applications. Or maybe sharding is another aspect. But how can you uh, increase, consider to increase, and, uh, and uh, just fire up another, another um, MySQL slave or 10 more MySQL slaves when you need them? You need to replicate. You need to copy all this data, and then, and then they must be available. It's not something fairly simple. Um, so that's, uh, that's a, a, a quite important aspect to consider. And even more in sharding. If you need to reshard environments, that is not easy. There are technologies out there that consider that, and they just say, OK, if I need more storage, I will add a new shard. But then the, the, the compromise is that they need to, uh, they need to deal with, the, with the, the sharding keys and the way, and the, way the data is distributed and work with chunks that do not balance well enough sometimes. So there, are, there is always a trade-off here between, uh, between what you can do and you cannot do. And I, what I'm referring here is, of course, to MySQL. But uh, many rules apply to NoSQL technologies as well. It's not just a MySQL issue. Okay? So that's why you can see around so many um, companies trying to fix this problem. But the problem, let's, let's face it, has not been fixed yet. And it's really, really difficult. It's probably one of the most uh, difficult aspects to fix. Um, one of the other points that we must consider in this case is, uh, are we running a database as a service? Or uh, maybe it's better to work as a platform as a service. Uh, meaning, do we really want to have the database separate from your, our applications and the way we want to uh, set up the application? Or is it better to define that the database is part of the application and we simply release the whole environment with the database in it? I am a database man. So of course, uh, I always think at uh, what is in the left side there. But the reality is that if you are an application person, you look at this. And that is another problem with the combination of these two aspects. Fast uh, uh, vendors, of course, rely on this. But again, uh, there is a big issue because uh, the way you can scale and make the database elastic really relies on uh, 
how the application has been made and what can allow what allows you to do so. Okay, so it's not just the fact that you just you add there some more uh, MySQL service and uh, and uh, is job done. You really need to use this uh, MySQL service and the application must be do must be do that must do that. <coughs> Here is another problem. Um, and well, not a problem in this case, but it's just the, the way it can, you know, things can be handled when, you, when uh, it comes for storage. Um, we have two options, block storage and uh, object storage. And of course, the best thing to do is to use, uh, to use uh, uh, a cheaper version of this storage when, uh, when we don't need uh, all the full um, capabilities that we can, we can have with, uh, uh, with block storage. So for example, uh, um, as uh, Trove does, but also we see with the uh, Percona and MariaDB installations, uh, Swift is definitely the best solution to backup uh, um, with full of incremental backups from our database. Uh, because uh, once you have done that, then of course uh, you have, uh, you have uh, a cheaper storage and you can also move your backups easily. You can always use Cinder um, to manage your, uh, uh, your table spaces within the database. And that is another interesting aspect because with 5.6 uh, and uh, with the new versions, you can basically move these table spaces. So you can, be, you can take what you have within, uh, within Cinder and, uh, and you can copy that or move it from, uh, from one instance to another and then reattach it and run, and run MySQL. Now, when you can uh, use an API to integrate this aspect, then uh, you, have, uh, you have something that works very well for high availability and also for scalability. And uh, let's say that we have done another step uh, towards that uh, idea of the elasticity that I was talking about because you can take um, one of these table spaces, you can replicate it and then, and then uh, um, continue to run uh, uh, your system uh, and at the same time, you can also increase the size of your, uh, of your database cluster. Another important aspect that you have to consider, of course, is networking and the way you handle the networking within your, uh, within your environment, uh, within OpenStack here. Um, <clears throat> here we have two main points. On one, on one side, you have, uh, you have an application that has to rely on a cluster and usually the application is based on a single server. And uh, what you need to do is to basically create something in between, a proxy system, a load balancer that can help you in uh, identifying what is the best uh, server to use down there. The other option is to have this proxy at, uh, as part of the pass. And in that case, uh, you define that uh, you have less hopes and you, you define that uh, uh, the, the proxy and the application work together. Uh, and they will identify which database uh, and which database server to hit down there. Now, um, we wouldn't need this if we had uh, a more uh, advanced set of connectors. But unfortunately, the current connectors are not uh, designed to work in this way. And that's another, uh, another area where uh, MariaDB and, uh, and others are working on. Because, uh, because uh, uh, with the clients, uh, that are not uh, uh, up to date with uh, what you can do in the cloud environment, you have, you have problems with the elasticity that I mentioned before. And then the security is another aspect. Uh, so um, in OpenStack, we have Keystone, and we have uh, usually integration with LDAP, Auto LDAP, uh, and that's a great thing. What about uh, uh, the, the aspects that we have inside the uh, services that we offer. Um, yes, we can have uh, integration with LDAP or uh, we can have integration with Keystone, but, and that would be probably ideal because uh, in this case we, we don't uh, distribute uh, and we don't create uh, duplicate, um, uh, duplicate authentication within the database and externally. So another, another way to look at that is to have a an integration with the security plugins that are available in MySQL, or again, use a proxy that can uh, define basically the security plugin and uh, integrate the security plugin with LDAP or Keystone and the database. 
So very briefly, because uh, we are running out of time, as I can see. Um, we have, a, we have a, a, a something that we have added to the MariaDB server, which is quite important. It's called MariaDB Manager. So with MariaDB Manager, basically, let me skip uh, a little bit these slides. OK, we have something that is already available with, uh, with Trove in OpenStack. But with Trove, we have this on a single server. What we are going to do with the MariaDB Manager is to manage it basically a RESTful API and monitoring connected to agents to deploy and to, uh, and, to, um, and to control a cluster of servers. That's, uh, that's the idea. So it's all based on, uh, initially it's been based on, uh, on Galera. So we have this uh, um, uh, solution uh, uh, starting with a Galera cluster, but we will evolve this with uh, also uh, MySQL replications and other technologies. Uh, typical uh, block storage is, of course, uh, another important aspect for the cloud. Uh, interesting enough, this is available not only in OpenStack, but it's also available on premises and on, uh, and on um, um, uh, AWS. But uh, the first deployment is on OpenStack, as you can imagine. So, for example, if you want to provision a node, uh, uh, there is a set of API that we need to define with, uh, where basically the first thing to do is to create a node. The second aspect is to run uh, the connection uh, to that node and check what's in that node. The third one is to probe the state of the node and see, uh, and see uh, uh, if it's uh, um, able to accept the software. And the final point is the provisioning of the software. That is all available and uh, it's already available today. And uh, you can use uh, this API just to, uh, just to run them within uh, OpenStack uh, or uh, by adding it to your own tools if you, if you need that. Um, then you can start a node and you have, again, another, another um, 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 aspect, another API that can start it. Or you can use uh, the GUI to do that. All these aspects, I, I will skip most of these slides, uh, but uh, all these aspects are available. They're open source, and they are, uh, and they are of course, uh, um, um, available for you. The only, the, let's say that the only uh, known open source part is, uh, is based on, uh, on the extensions that we may have in the future, but right now everything is available as is. Um, you can also monitor the databases, of course, uh, and uh, here is what's coming. It will be, of course, as part of MariaDB 10. It will be integrated with other proxy servers that uh, will cover the aspect that I mentioned before. And, uh, and um, there, is, there, there is, of course, a project to integrate this to uh, the, current, uh, the current availability of Trove. So that's, uh, that's the idea to have uh, the cluster side um, uh, basically evol the evolution of Trove from the, from the server to the cluster side. That's uh, one of the aspects that we are going to, uh, we are going to add. Anyway, um, you can find this information on uh, mariadb.org and mariadb.com. There are not only aspects related to MariaDB, despite the name, but generally to MySQL and all other. Okay. Um, the slides will be available, so of course, I mean, you can, you're free, you're free to, to, to take pictures, but, of, but you, can, you can review them later. I'm sorry, we were running out of time, and um, that's, uh, that's unfortunately a problem. But uh, I'm available, so if you have, uh, if you have any questions, uh, can, I, can, I can take them.